Friday night, episode 47. It's usually got nothing to do with what they're saying it is. It's got to do with a fear or something that's going in, that's going on unconsciously or a belief that they are projecting out onto their charts. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax, learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Up Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we have Jeremy Hills on the show. Now, Jeremy isn't just a trader, he's also an NLP expert. Now, if you don't know what that is, we're going to talk about that in the show, Uh, so stay tuned for that and some trading insights as well. Now, before we get into the show, I just wanted to read out an email or part of an email that was sent to me this week, which I thought was quite funny, Uh, and um, I, I thought I'll read it out to you guys. So this is from Leanne Crisp, and she said... Uh, thank you for all the work getting on getting interviews to us. I've learned so much from listening and trying out your suggestions, and often think that if it wasn't if if I was on the show and you asked the question, "Who is your mentor?" My answer would be Trading Nut. Very good, Leanne. Thank you very much for that email. Um, so there was actually something in that 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 really made me think, and that was the the fact that you sort of mentioned and trying out the suggestions. So not blindly following them, just taking them and seeing which ones work for you. Um, Trying out things, I suppose, is the only way we can progress. So if you're just stuck down a a rut, then maybe it's time to look outside of what you're currently doing and just try something radically different. I know... In the Fifty Two Traders podcast, I told you I told you guys that I'd started taking cold showers. Well, the good news is I'm still doing it, and I'm literally doing two a day. Um, sometimes I don't do like the full on cold shower, so maybe if I do one at night, it might not be the full on cold the whole time. But I'm still doing them, and I love it. I absolutely love it. They make you feel so energized and ready for the day. And they also snap you out of any negative sort of thinking or um, any emotion that you're currently feeling. It just snaps you out of it. So even if sometimes if you've had a bad day at work or whatever, come home, jump in the cold shower, and trust me, you will feel completely refreshed and ready to either jump on the charts or do whatever you want to do, spend some time with your family, etc. So guys, that's trying different things out. Now, there's something I haven't mentioned. I can't believe I haven't mentioned it. But I've done it for about a month now, and it is a massive change for me anyway. So um, being a meat eater all my life, I actually stopped eating meat for the past five weeks now. I haven't had one bit of meat, and that includes fish, nothing, no meat whatsoever. I thought it was going to be really hard, but in fact, it was actually quite easy. I mean, most of the food... Funnily enough, tastes way better, and I don't have like problems with lots of little bits of fat in there or, or whatever it is that annoys you about you know bad bits of meat and that sort of thing. Uh, so I've actually found it really enjoyable. The only problem, and there is one problem, which is immensely annoying, is when you go to a restaurant and the fact that you've actually got nothing like a limited amount maybe one or two things on a menu you can take you can you can actually eat so that's probably the most annoying thing about it is the restaurants um takeaway joints is fine it's just uh it's not takeaway joints i mean like if you're going in for a for a a grab and and a snack or whatever lunch that's fine it's just the restaurants i don't know what it is um anyway so that was my little suggestion that I I tried, or I am trying at the moment. Um, how long is it going to go on for? I don't know. Um, but look, it's it's. I do feel better for it. Funnily enough, I do feel better for it. So, guys, the why you might but might be thinking, why why did you get into this, Cam? What happened? Why the sudden change? Well, it was funnily enough. I was watching the news, and these activists were in supermarkets. Uh, over here in New Zealand, putting stickers on meat and dairy products. And I got a glimpse of one of the stickers on the news article, and it said, watch uh, YouTube, or YouTube, uh, dairy is scary. So I went onto YouTube, jumped on this video, had a look at it, it was five minutes, and for whatever reason, I don't even know why, but five days later, or less than five days later, I, I was 
that was it. I just stopped eating meat. I mean, I still have dairy, so, you know, we'll have milk and stuff, but I stopped eating meat. So anyway, I'm going on. It's a bit of a rant. Um, I just thought I'd give you a little bit of an insight into some of the things that are changing here in my life. Um, the good news is I've got more time freeing up coming in the coming days. So I've got one more day and then I've got some massive amounts of time freeing up. So I should be a lot more active on a lot more of the channels here on Trading Nut. So you can look forward to that. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get on with today's interview with uh, Jeremy. All right, folks, we've got Jeremy Hills here from resultswithnlp.com. Now, Jeremy was referred to me by Mercedes, who was uh, on the show not so long ago, and thought it would be quite an interesting interview, uh, not just with somebody who trades, but somebody who uh, has a massive focus on trading mindset. So welcome to the show, Jeremy. How are things over there in Perth? Oh, fantastic. It's pretty warm now. Um, we've uh, Things have warmed up over here, which has been fantastic. Um, yeah, yesterday I got out to the beach on a Sunday and it was uh, nice and warm, so I absolutely enjoyed it. God, you guys are already, already getting the warm weather. <laughs> we're miles <laughs> away from that. Well, we're months away from it. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, look, uh, let's start the show off by getting your sort of backstory to, to find yeah. out how you got to where you are today. So how did you first get I suppose, either interested in NLP or, or the trading thing, and how did it start? Well, what first got me into NLP, though, was um, trading itself. And um, I think around 2006, property prices uh, in Perth and around Australia were getting really, really high. I just came out of school a couple of years before or so, and I was really, really wanting to um, get ahead. And the area that I lived in, I'm sure many of you know Perth, um, I lived around Mount, Mount Pleasant, Apple Cross, and all these people were driving Ferraris and Lamborghinis out of what they call the Raffles Hotel there. And I was thinking, these people are doing something different than working in a nine-to-five job. <laughs> so so things then, I, just, I started asking questions and I started finding out, well, the, what, what people do um, that are successful. They do things differently to everyone else. And it started me on a quest to find other ways to make more money and also to get ahead. And I started asking uh, just the people around me that I knew, uh, family, friends, that um, what their advice would be. And a lot of them were more in running businesses and buying and holding um, stocks and houses. And I started doing um, and holding stocks and I started mentioning it to someone I came across that was also a property developer. Um, and that property developer, he used to trade for a Singapore bank, trading currencies. And that started, once again, started me asking questions. Then I started taking courses that were introductory courses to um, not just trading. It was different other ways to make money like um, online um, yeah, online businesses and and I started opening up this way, all these new ways of making money. And um, from that guy I met, used to work in a Singapore bank, he was telling me how much money he, ma- he made and it started getting me really curious about currency trading and it started uh, um, me putting my feelers out and I started finding courses. And I, my first introduction into actual trading versus just buying and holding stocks um, was um, was GAN and I started learning GAN and I really started trading uh, futures originally um, in around 2007 and it was definitely interesting times around 2007. Um, I was very bearish and I took a, a trade, my very, probably my very first day trading was the second leg down um, of the stock market as it was crashing and I, I remember I had my first two trades, the first first one I placed was a trade short on the Australian dollar and you know, I was on the on this Australian stock market. Now I was in the euro dollar um, US, I think I went long. I think the euro didn't work out. The Australian one, uh, Australian stock market that I was trading ended up getting stopped out and then I ended up entering again the next day and went short and the market just absolutely fell through the floor pretty much. Um, I was actually trading with someone else at the time um, and he had some trading experience and he kind of got a little bit of the jitters and thought oh, I was going to end. So we got out, but then obviously it still kept on going. So we, yeah. I got a pullback and I shorted it and I kept on trading it down. 
Um, I think my first month of trading officially, I think I made like 100% return on my money. So I thought I was pretty much God. <laughs> and <Indeed. laughs> Um And I was probably risking at the time, um, so it was about 5% or so at the time, which was probably way too much. Um, and I soon learned trading wasn't quite as easy as uh, my first month of trading was. And I probably gave a lot of that back and not long after in a sideways market. Um, it probably took me over a year, year and a half to give it all back, but I learned a lot in that time. Um, and over, over time, I started to become a lot more conservative. Um, I think some of the people that told me is sometimes there's, there's bold traders and there's old traders, but there's no old bold traders. Right. <laughs> And I started uh, becoming a lot more conservative in my way and uh, in the way I traded. And I always found that I always came back to tra- taking most of my trades on daily charts. And um, I started reducing my amount I started to trade. And I just focused on being consistent, starting with a smaller trading account and started to build. And I've always traded things that were really easy to manage. I found trading stocks because of gapping and even when I started learning how to how to trade, I know people that were trading around 2007, 2008, you could be long one stock one day and the next minute it could be down 20, 30% overnight. So, and I may have only been intending to risk 1% and I would have lost 15, 20% just because of the way the markets were falling. So I just completely stayed out of stocks and I found trading futures and um, even trading Forex Gapping is absolutely minimal and position sizing is the most important for me and 1% is the most I risk now. And and I find even when I was learning in the earlier days, risking only 1%, it, it was very forgiving because if I made a lot of mistakes, if I had one good trade, it, it, I went back to break even. And I think having good position sizing and good money management made me learn and made me stay in the game. And if I definitely kept trading 5%, 10% and stuff like that, I wouldn't have stayed in the game very long. And how did you get into the uh, NLP space during this journey? I realized I was going around and around in circles. And, yeah, I was going looking for the holy grail of systems, um, probably like a lot of people, and we think that somehow finding uh, some magical system is going to make everything better. Um, and I've tried everything pretty much. I tried, I tried GAN, I tried Elliott Wave, I tried, um, yeah, MACDs and, and everything. All the, and I found the only thing that, that worked in the end is stripping everything back and just focusing on myself and focusing on psychology. And, I found, and the more successful people I spoke to, they all said, it's all psychology, it's all mindset. Um, And I've always found that all the people that I met, the ones that are successful, are really keen about learning about themselves and they're really keen about learning about the markets. And so can you quickly, and I asked this question because I assume that everyone out there knows what NLP is. Um, Yesterday I I mentioned it to someone and they had no idea. They'd never heard of it (laughs) before. Uh, so I think it, could you give everyone just a quick rundown as to what it is for those that don't know what we're talking about? Yeah. So I, I think we've all got to start somewhere. There's always a point uh, where we all haven't known NLP at some point uh, or another. Um, so NLP stands for neuro linguistic programming. Uh, neuro stands for the mind. Uh, linguistic stands for like the language that you use and programming is um, we are often have programs that run unconsciously. And a lot of the work that I do now is helping people uncover their negative emotions, their limiting beliefs that they have, and also um, the programs that they're having unconsciously. So we have strategies from everything, from tying a shoelace to, um, yeah, to, to meeting someone, to communicating, and even to trading. Um, and a lot of the times what we're doing is, in a trading situation, is we project our problems and our past onto our trading charts and i find the people who have tons and tons of stuff all over their trading charts are usually the ones that are usually having the most negative emotions the most conflicts and they and it's just they're trying to wait for more confirmation or they're trying to get in too early and the 
what they're putting on those charts ends up representing it eventually. And they end up with conflicting information on the chart. And that usually stems from conflicts that are going on within. Oh, that's interesting. That is really interesting. I've never really thought of it like that. So, so if somebody was to have a clean, fairly clean chart, what would that just signify that they've got less conflicts going on or... I would definitely say there's probably something going on there. Like I found the best traders that I've I've met, they've only got two, three, four things that they're using for confirmation. Um, If you've got 10 things that you need to line up before you take a trade, there's probably conflicts going on. You're making your life extremely difficult and you've got to have one, one thing that gets you into a trade and one thing that gets you out of a trade in five seconds. Um, or it would, you'll just be in conflict and you'll have analysis paralysis. Yes, indeed, indeed. Now, um, so so uh, where, where are you at now with, with your trading? Um, I am trading more longer terms. I trade, um, I, I mostly make around 25, 30% a year, and that for me is perfect because I trade end of day and I coach during the day. Um, some of the people that I've coached, they make that in a month, so but they are mostly trading shorter term time frames and that totally works for their psychology. Okay, cool. So so do you want to go through like and give us some um I suppose data around what you're doing? So like maybe the the average um winning percentage or risk to reward ratio, that sort of thing, just to give the guys some some grounding as to, to how your trading looks at the moment. Yep. So I look mostly at the weekly chart and then I take my trades off the daily chart and then I will use an hourly chart or a four hour chart to confirm or get someone's better stop placement. Um, my average um, average amount of wins is around 35%. Um, I would rather take some sometimes a lot of small losses and make sure that I'm in a really good position and actually hold a position. Um, I mostly trail all my positions now. Um, I have in the past put stops in and I found that the best way to trade for me is just let the market tell me. And the best way the market tells me is when it takes me out of a position um, through a trail because I find once I'm in, in a trade, the most difficult thing is to keep in that nice calm mindset and stay in that headspace. And I found keeping a mechanical uh, trail in once I'm in the market this works best for me and so so with that in mind right so the so we had a uh, a guy on recently and I, I just it sticks in my mind that he was saying like you know he'd have 11 losses before a win but yeah. would still be carrying out that strategy which you know 11 out of well 10 out of 10 is, is you know if you're doing doing your percentage win rate is very low um yeah. sorry if 10 out of 10 loss is zero so you're talking like massive massively sort of losing a lot of trades how does that but, uh how does one sort of get that, to the point where that's that they can live with that saying that though yeah. i i'm pretty aggressive when i enter a trade so i would probably only take 0.2 percent of a loss or half a percent of a loss so I'll be very rarely taking a full percent, like maybe only 20% or, or so of those, those would be an actual full percent loss. So most of my drawdowns would be a maximum of probably 3 to 5% at any given time. Uh, like I look, okay. I, yeah. I, so that's something to keep in mind. Like I found sometimes even the best traders, is they're, they're very good at getting, cutting those losses short in the beginning and then giving that market space to move once it starts going in their favor and just uh, letting it run. Cause, and I and I found um, I, I remember I listened to the turtle traders and I and I started looking into them like some of their win rates were only ten percent <laughs> and they were having these and some of their wins they were they would make fifty times what they risked and stuff like that and then they were sometimes the most profitable traders out there but obviously psychologically people sometimes find those sort of trading systems very difficult to to execute yeah and, and so so I suppose that's what I want to dive in on and see if if you've got any insight into how the how 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 the guys listening could potentially overcome or at least withstand that the you know the have the ability to to take that many losses without it affecting them emotionally i i would say the best thing to do is only ever risk 1% never risk more than that um and even if you have to start with half a percent and also i think 
when it, from experience, most people are trading more, like too much money to start with. Um, I've, I've seen people, they go in trading for the very first time and they sell the house and put a million dollars into their, uh, accounts and start use no stop losses. And they just start dwindling their capital away. And mentally it just makes it impossible for them to keep trading. Um, like I've never blown up an account ever. Um, I say, because I've always had good money management, I've, always come back to at least break even in those early stages when I was learning. So what about these guys? That, so, and this is a common problem. And I'll say these guys, and like, I've been there and I know it as well, in terms of the, the whole revenge, revenging a, <laughs> a loss or something like that, where you just yeah. like, you know, let's say you, you, had a, you had a great trade. It was going into profit. It was in good profit, came back, you got stopped out at break even and it just missed your take profit and you're sort of annoyed that, you know, you let it all go away. Go when all, I suppose, yeah, you could have done something that would have, you know, leapfrogged you ahead of where you were currently, but you're still back to where you began. What, do you, what are your sort of views on how you can get yourself out of that situation where you want to revenge? I think sometimes when, when it is being aware and sometimes even taking a good journal and writing down what you're thinking and how you're feeling um, before you take a trade, uh, during a trade, uh, helps a lot. And if you notice that though that is something that you are doing and on a regular basis, just close the computer and walk away. Um, I've always known, I've always speak to the best traders and, and people I coach, it's like when you know you're not in a good headspace, just walk away. But what about when the what about when they don't walk away? That's the thing. That's the and the funny thing is you could they even sort of say, Oh I'll, I'll walk away or people will say, Yeah, just close it down and walk away. But then all of a sudden you're like, hang on a sec, I've actually somehow subconsciously gone in there and taken a trade. <laughs> and then you've remembered it like an hour later and like, Oh yeah, that's right, I was really angry at the what happened before and so i've gone out gone away and i've sort of subconsciously even just taken one you didn't even know about it, didn't even think about it. it was like look it's the hail mary sort of approach have you ever come across that oh I, I definitely do um like a lot of the work that i do is actually resolving like a lot of stuff from people's past because a, a lot of the times i i even work with business owners and stuff a lot of the times when someone's having a problem it's got nothing to do with what's actually presenting um, and if I had uncovered their beliefs that they have around those issues and if the, and that would show up if they're doing really good journaling, um, that those beliefs are actually probably affecting other areas of their lives as well. Um, and obviously there's a big discussion to go delving into someone's past that if you are keeping good journals and you then start to notice a, a, that as a regular occurrence and a regular pattern, um, yeah, you, I would say you need to learn from that experience and learn from your learn about yourself. And if you realize that is something that you're doing, um, I would say usually it's always best to resolve whatever's going in unconsciously. But if you notice, okay, this is something that I'm doing, you can consciously put, if you have to put rules in place, I'm not usually for rules. It's be- definitely better to sort out what's going in unconsciously. But if you're noticing that, put a rule in place. Like if I've taken a winning trade, um, I walk away for the day, and if that's a rule that works really, really well for you, just put it in place. Like I find, I'm I'm always best after I've had a win to take a day, to just not trade for the rest of the day, just take a day off because I find like I still am more in, more inclined once I've won, and I feel like oh, I've got this. This is really easy now, and I'm and I'm going to take take the next trade. Um, I found sometimes giving that headspace to come back with fresh eyes to the markets is always the best thing to do. And what and you see, so you've mentioned you've had a few, quite a few guys that have come on, and they have either been good traders that you've coached, or they've come on and taken your coaching and coaching and gone on to do do great things. I mean, the ones that have come to you that have been decent already, what have they been asking about? Like, so when someone's taken a loss, or like a, a lot of the times I find is people are trading a system; they've got something. And they stop trading for whatever reason. And they're having periods of time maybe where they might take a few months off or even six months off trading. Um, or 
or the and what I find is when they start to make these losses and you start and I start to ask them questions sometimes I've uncovered things like they've been fear of rejection like they've lost money and they felt rejected um and when I've delved down is the very first time that they've actually experienced that fear was when they were a child and it may seem like it's not related but what we in timeline therapy which is another process that I teach is that's a gestalt um of fear of rejection and they're bringing that same fear into the present moment and they project that onto their charts because a lot of the time we are deleting distorting and generalizing the information that's coming into our uh, neurology and usually all we can ever see is our past or our own past experiences and those cloud our judgment when we go to trade yeah, very interesting, eh? It is interesting. So, so it's not necessarily the so the, even the guys that are, that have done well in the past that come to you are still or are currently in a in some sort of funk that they're trying to get themselves out of. Is that right? Yeah, if, if I've worked with traders or business owners, like if they're having problems, it's usually got nothing to do with what they're saying. It is. It's got to do with a fear or something that's going in that's going on unconsciously or a belief that they are projecting out onto their charts. When they go to trade, that belief shows up. Um, like I was giving an example, if they're experiencing an internal conflict and not being able to make decisions, that may end up with 20 indicators on the chart. And that obviously then produces inconsistent results when they go to trade. Uh, look, I know you haven't had enough time to prepare for this answer, but I mean, are there other, other sort of things that you talk about rejection? Are there other th- common things that you typically have seen traders come to you with everyone's different and everyone's got slightly different problems um but they've all got negative emotions they've got a limiting beliefs that are going on or they've got internal conflicts and it'll be falling into one of those three things so negative emotions are usually um when it comes to trading it's fear fear of missing out fear of rejection fear of losing money um all those kind of things um Beliefs, it could be things like can't make decisions. Um, that could be a, a full-time belief or it could be an internal conflict. So sometimes they can make decisions and sometimes they can't make decisions. Um, and when they go to trade, um, obviously that doubt and that hesitation um, affects how they trade. Okay, cool. And what, what about with this, um, the, you know, the new markets that come online, for example, there was the big binary options craze in the past and, and now we've got cryptocurrency. I mean, what... What do you, have you have you had any experience with guys who sort of come to you and they're they're all over the place with like I was trading forex one month stocks the next and then crypto um, yeah more recently absolutely and a lot of that stuff is coming from self doubt of some kind or that or they're feeling like there's something out there that's going to help them solve what's going on uh, internally for them. Um, I'll say some of the best traders I know, they trade just a few stocks or they just trade one or two setups. Um, you don't need a lot to make, um, like a lot of different things to make money. You just need to be really good at a few things. It might be having a really good relationship with um, a few markets or it might be having one or two setups that you um, search through markets to do it. But usually people have have something that they can, they can get into flow with. Um, and... I find things like cryptocurrencies are just like a bit like penny stocks. Like we think that somehow they've got this fad sort of attached to them. It's like the brand new shiny thing and we're kind of attracted to it. And then people just get in and they just think they're going to get in and just make this big amount of money because it's had this huge move up in the last six months or so. Um, I, when I look for a market to trade, I want it to be liquid. I want to have really close spreads. I want no slippage. I want no gapping. I want 24-hour trading so I can make sure when I have, um, when I risk 1%, I know I'm going to, when I exit, I'm going to max out at 1% and I'm not going to lose a cent more. Yeah, it's funny because eh? I, I mentioned this in a show recently where you know I always get the odd person that comes to me and goes, um, oh, you know, can I make make some money in in this new market that nobody really is um you know it's, it's a bit like your penny stocks yeah. etc i just had a guy literally last week going um uh, money to be made in bitcoin question mark yes or no uh, i'm like i'm like yes but it was ages ago i would i'd avoid it um 
uh, and he's like, ah. Oh. So, and I said, hashtag avoid, and then I'm like, don't, and he's like, don't get involved. I'm like, yes, don't get involved. That's what I'm saying. Don't do it. Um, yeah, I, because he's got like, he's got no experience either. So it's like, but it's even then that sort of psychological. There's something drawing him towards it, which I, I don't know what it was in that, in that instance. But um, yeah, people get suckered in, don't they? Yeah, I, I I think, and a lot of it is just we look to other people to help us out when we're not when we're not confident or we're doubting ourselves. Um, like I had a friend that was doing a presentation on uh, trading, and he had these beautiful candlestick patterns, and he was telling us like it's not it's, we're not here to predict the markets, and, and for me to give you all this sort of uh, information on stocks. And he said, uh, that this is the pattern and you've got to look for this pattern and, and you're not really going to know where the market's always going to go. But if you follow this pattern, you're going to have the odds in your favor and do this amazing speech for over an hour. And right at the very end, one person just put their hand up and said, oh, where do you think this stock's going? And where do you think this stock's is? And do you think this one's uh, going to, to collapse soon? And, I've, and I see it all the time as like we, 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 most people know what to do. It's just they don't do it or they are hesitating because of self-doubt and um, yeah, and internal conflicts and negative emotions that are going on. Like if the person's probably asking about that stock, they probably shouldn't be in it. <laughs> exactly. And, and so so what about if we had to give a sort of like step-by-step formula for, for a retail trader who was working a day job, if they wanted to, I suppose, more from a mindset point of view as opposed to a, an actual sort of trading strategy set up type thing what would yeah. what steps would you recommend they take I w- it is always best to resolve what, the stuff that is going in your past like negative emotions and limiting beliefs and internal conflicts um which is a lot of the stuff that i do in nlp and timeline therapy um i would um say if, if so, so how would thing, you how would you go about doing that uh, i suppose without going to an expert to help you through it yeah so i would say the very first thing to do is start journaling I, I found that so the way we actually create our results is we actually start with thoughts and then we add our feelings and our emotions to it and then we actually take actions or we don't take actions and then we get results and we don't get the results. And from my experience, anytime someone's not getting a result, I can always trace it back to a negative thought and a negative emotion. And a lot of the times when people start trading, the very first data that they start to keep is the actions that they're taking. They're taking, doing screenshots of their trades and all of that. I would say the most important thing, though, to actually record is how they're feeling and what they're thinking. Like what are they seeing, hearing, and feeling, and they're saying to themselves every time they go to trade, every time they exit a position, because those thoughts and those feelings are dictating the actions that they take. And so my question I've got for you there is how on earth do you do that? Because it's all, it's easy, it can be easier said than done, but with people yeah. who are, who, you know, they, they might think, well, I'm just like, it's just a normal day. But the reality is it's not, but they think it is. Yeah. And do you know what I mean? How do they get to that level of being able to go, I really understand what I'm, I'm feeling now from an emotional point of view. Are there any, are there any tools that they can, they can use? And it is hard work. It's just sitting there and being quiet with yourself. Like every trader I've known that has has made it and is successful, they keep journals and they understand how they feel. And I know good traders. It's like you think their trading day is just sit down and when the market opens and go home when the market's closed. But sometimes they're like, I'm feeling, I don't feel very good right now. I'm going to go to the beach. And it may seem like they're doing nothing, but they're getting themselves into a state that where they feel good. So when they go sit down and go to trade again, they are feeling really good and, they're in, and they can get back into flow with the market. But if you're like, I, I've seen people when they, uh, that um, where I am in our time zone in Australia and stuff that people want to trade the US market. So they're staying up all, all hours of the night from like 9, 9 p.m. to like 2 a.m. in the morning and stuff like that. And they're tired. It's very hard to be in a really good state of mind when you're tired. And I sometimes see people create unrealistic expectations. So I'm going to trade like I'm going to sit down from yeah the, the US open to the US close and it's pretty much all night long. <laughs> but so, then, well, when, when do you get to sleep? 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it was like the guy the guy I interviewed this morning, Steve, who would have been on the show probably before this week. Uh, he he was saying that I mean, if he doesn't get nine hours sleep, that's it. He doesn't he doesn't open the open up his PC. He and, needs and nine hours sleep, otherwise he knows that it's detrimental to him. Absolutely, it, in, in those those small things that I've noticed with traders that we look at their strategies, that those things make a huge difference. Like I've known traders that they just that they'll have they have a little side project that they're doing just to keep their mind off trading sometimes. And you may think it, it oh, they're just distracting themselves or something. Sometimes they just need to do something that makes them feel good to make sure when they go sit down and in front of their screen or do whatever they're doing, they're feeling good um, because it gets them in flow. Okay, cool. Look, let's dive into the more technical side of things uh, yeah. and talk about your trading and just find out, like, if you had to sort of if you had to give the guys a quick overview of things that you would look at on a price chart when you're using your strategy, what what do you focus on? Yep, um, I'll start with my tools. So pretty much the only thing that I would put on a chart is a, a horizontal line, which is for support and resistance. And I would sometimes use um, just maybe a trend line. Just, but most of the time, I'm not using a trend line. I'm just when you put a horizontal line on the on the chart, and then I'm going to look for patterns. I'm mostly looking for uh, when I look at the weekly chart, like where the market's sitting, I'm looking at charts. I could be looking for things like head and shoulders, double bottoms. I'm just really looking at price. And one thing that I learned, and I I thought it was a really good way because we get so caught up on labeling um, what the market's doing, um, is when a market is moving, all you really need to look at is like if you're looking at candles or the pattern, actually just really think like what is the what does it actually mean? Like, what is the market actually telling me? Because we often will say, okay, that's a shooting star or whatever the candlestick pattern is and that, oh, that means it should do this. But we're always putting it together in a bigger picture. And when you're looking at a weekly chart um, and you've got the patterns and you understand where you're going, it's like you've got to work out, like, if this has had a huge run down or run up, um, there may be some time where it's going to go sideways. Um, like I remember I had probably one of my best trading years is when I traded uh, in 2014 down to 2015 and I traded the euro US dollar short and I was getting in positions and I was holding them. I, I held one position for nearly a whole year. I pretty much entered nearly at the top of the euro and I just held it all the way down to the bottom and after that time, though, um, I did have to make adjustments to my trading strategy and start trading shorter term because the market went sideways for, and it's still pretty much going sideways since uh, 2015. So, uh, and it's keeping those things in mind and understanding where you sit in the market. Like when I have developed mechanical systems just based on trend following. I found that they work when the market's trending. When the market's not trending, a lot of it is understanding where you are in the market. Um, and every trader that I've spoken to is they always know when not to trade. And if you've got a trend following system in a trending market, you're going to make a lot of money. It doesn't matter what it is. If you've got a, a market that trades sideways movement, if you're trading in a sideways market, it will do very well. It's just when you trade the wrong strategy in the wrong market is where you burn burn capital up. <laughs> now we spoke about this before the show, uh, intuition and how much that sort of played a factor and a role in yeah. uh, in being successful at this. And ironically, ironically, the very very first interview I did on my very first podcast, which was probably four years ago now, uh, was by a guy who ran something called the intuitive trader i think it was and i I thought yeah and and at that point i'd i'd done it like i'd been into robot trading and um i had seen about a million systems and and all this sort of stuff and i was like no it's rubbish rubbish i thought that's the back of my mind i was like this intuitive stuff there's no way you can it can be a way to do this but yeah what are your thoughts on that because i think i've changed my tune on it i i intuition is the key even if you are using a mechanical system, you need to know when to turn it on and you need to know when to turn it off. And the only way you're going to do that is if you've developed the system yourself. 
Um, otherwise, it's going to break down and it will stop working at some point or another. Like if you are trading a trending system in a trending market, you don't need to be a genius. It's going to make money. The thing is, is though, you need to know when to stop. And that's when intuition comes into it. And I, I do find the people that are, people that understand trading and have been doing it for a long period of time is intuition comes into it. Um, like, Everyone can make money in the markets if you do it at the right time. Like everyone who's, you see, right right now, look at the S&P 500. It's had a huge bull run. People are buying and buying and buying and buying. And it will come to an end. And the thing is, though, is knowing when to stop is the key. Mm. And the only way you're ever really going to know is by having intuition, understanding market conditions have changed. And it, sometimes it is keeping stats. Maybe you have a mechanical system and, and it starts to make drawdowns. So then you're like, is this, this, this drawdown that I'm having in my equity curve based on my system or is there actually something going on that's, that is not right? And then at, even at that point with a mechanical system, your intuition is going to have to come in and say, hey, I need to stop trading. Yeah, and, and as I was sort of saying, it's a bit like um, anything that you become an expert at, right? You sort of do grow an intuition behind it that, like, you sort of, you can see what, you can foresee what's coming, right? You sort of can see three or four moves ahead. Uh, it doesn't yep. matter what it is. It, and on, my example was like playing sport. You can, if you play it long enough, you can start to see the game much better than someone who, who's just joined and, and started picking up the game in the last year or two. So I yeah, that's how I sort of see trading these days. It's like if you can get that intuition, even though, yeah, you have got a system, it, it, can, it will give you – it may be the difference. It may be the game changer that you need. Um, yeah. Righty-ho. So, look, let's dive into the quick fire round. So this um, – hopefully this this is all relevant to you and some of the yep. questions you're going to be able to probably dive into a bit, bit more than others. So how long did it take you to go from newbie to profitable? To start to be consistently profitable would be about seven years. I would say, though, because of good money management, though, I was pretty much break even from the start. And I would say to anyone, just keep good good um, money management through that whole period so you actually stay profitable and you actually get, get to that point of becoming profitable because I see a lot of people quit after that four or five years. What's your mental approach to trading and do you have any special techniques you can share with us? Yep, I would say it is important to work on yourself. It's all about personal development and um, a lot of stuff that I do is resolve stuff from the past for people with negative emotions and limiting beliefs and internal conflicts that people have got. And we are always creating our results or not our results, starting with our thoughts and our feelings. The best thing I would say is keep a journal. If you, Even if you're not going to resolve it, just don't trade when you're feeling like your thoughts and your feelings aren't in alignment to your trading. That's the best advice I can give and just keep learning about yourself. What's your favorite entry setup? Um, I like trading just a, um, a higher bottom or a lower top um, on a daily chart that's in alignment with a weekly trend or a weekly uh, chart pattern. What strategies do you use to exit or manage active trades? I find trailing stops are always best. I'll be trailing them behind a daily or a weekly candle or I could even be trading it behind uh a daily or weekly top or bottom. What's your recommended trading book? Um, I do, do really like the Buddhist trader that you had with Mercedes uh, a few weeks ago. Um, definitely one of my ones that I had for ages was trading in the zone. Um, trading in the zone was definitely something that started to help me become more profitable for sure. If there was one thing you recommend any retail trader spend the next month mastering, what would it be? Why? And how could they go about mastering it? So come back to the journal, keep a journal and write down everything you see, hear, feel and say to yourself when you take a trade and when you exit a trade and you will start to notice patterns by doing that. What's the worst trade you ever had? Um, it was probably a few years ago now. I was tr- I was playing around and, and trying to add fundamental analysis to my uh, trading and I tried to uh, trade on gold and I... Uh, and I was, it was a new platform and I started putting in and, and I thought I was risking 1% and I didn't get my position sizing right and I was risking 10%. And I remember I opened up 
and it was like two or three percent down. I'm like, oh my god, what's happening? So then, I, then I started hoping for a brief moment that it would all go go around, and ended up probably only losing like five or six percent. But uh, I, if I've always and I've always and I knew better at the time is if you're in a losing position, and you know you've done something wrong, just get out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Um, if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, just keep learning about yourself. It is all about mindset and you are the edge in any system. It is your intuition and you've got to keep working on getting yourself in a good state of mind. Cool. Well, look, the last question of the show is we'd like you to give us the bones of a full trading strategy. So an entry setup, stop loss, take profit targets, market time frame, basically something our listeners can try it at home. What have you got for us there, Jeremy? Okay, I would say is just simply look at a weekly chart. And if you've got an, a lower top on a weekly chart or, or a higher bottom on a weekly chart, just look at a daily chart and trade that and trade when that daily trend confirms. And I sometimes just, I can trail it behind the daily bottoms um, or even just trail it as you go up, um, uh, even through the candles. And I will say is it's it, as simple as that is, is just following the daily trend with the weekly trend. It works if you've got a really good market. And that's where I think the intuition comes into it. But just trading the daily chart in alignment with the weekly chart you can make a really good money in a really in, in the right market. And when you say when the daily trend confirms, are you talking about like when it breaks that low or if it was going down, for example, um, yep. that would confirm that it's it's a, it's a trend on. Okay. Yeah, cool. so when, when the previous day is low, um, low, I would say enter and then put the stop above the um, the high, of the high of that previous day and then just trail the stop down above each daily high. Um, if you want to go more long term, you could trail it even behind every um, top all the way down. Cool. Look, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the guys to get hold of you? Um, email would be the best one, um, or my website that um, so resultswithnlp.com, or email would be Jeremy at resultswithnlp.com. A big thank you to Jeremy for sharing with us today. Everything we've discussed here, along with all the links, are in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Jeremy in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, I wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed that interview with Jeremy. Now, look, if you do want to find out a little bit more about how he sees a price chart, then head over to the Trading Nut YouTube channel or just head over to the tradingnut.com site and you'll find the video there of Jeremy walking us through a price chart. Now, I did actually record another video this week. It was me going through a, a strategy that was submitted as part of the Robot Traders Club and uh, it was based on the Heiken Ashy Candlesticks and I, uh, it was actually quite a unique strategy, and I've, I've sort of played with it and got it to a point where uh, some of the stuff that it's doing looks 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 really good. So go and check that video out as well. It's in the Trading Nut uh, YouTube channel, so you're going to have to hunt around for that one over there. All right, folks, until next time, have a great week in the markets.